Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. I have with me a guest who can bring you all the info, all the intel on the University of Miami. I have known this individual, God, since 2003, I think it is, or two around there, about around three, 2003. He was the publisher previously at Kane's Time years and years ago. I got brought on. I, he assigned me stories, and then we started. We started our own pod, our own website, InsideTheU.com. I have the co-founder of InsideTheU.com. He is still there. He's been burning the midnight oil. I left Inside the U in 2013. Had a family, all that stuff. But Chris, I have Chris Stock with me expert university of miami guy so anytime y'all want to t- talk about me and tell me that i'm an idiot i got chris stock here to answer some questions about what's popping off at the university of miami talk about the florida state game last week we got duke tomorrow chris thank you so much for joining us man it's been a long time my friend yeah i appreciate the intro it, it's crazy when you talk about the years and kind of going back and it's wild and when we started inside the u I, I always, even now, I mean, I always think about where we were from where we're at now as a company and just that first year, Rudy, and, and that grind, um, it, it's it's really hard even sometimes to put into words what that grind was like in those early years. And, and without, you know, the work there, the work that you did, you know, we wouldn't be where we're at today with it all. And, you know, and I know we're going to maybe get into some of the, uh, the things about, you talked about the years of covering Miami just the ups and downs. And I think about the fans too. It's not like I've, I'm the only one on this ride uh, and, and seeing everything that's gone on the, the fans like yourself, you've been a, a long time supporter of the hurricanes and you've seen a lot too. And I, I, I think that's where we're getting to with this season. We'll get into this season, but everyone should just definitely be excited about this year. It's a, it's exciting brand of football and, you know, and, and, they're not done, you know, and I'm looking forward to seeing how the finish goes, but certainly I'll try to answer as many questions as I can, the best I can here. I I remember when we were at Denny's in Coral Gables, right? Charting this up to start inside the U in 2007. That was the Ja'Cory Harris, Northwestern, Booker T. Washington year. We're like, we're going to do this. We built a website. We did, we had a guy named Steve Pena, who was a fraternity brother of mine, build it from the ground up, back ended it. We had a deal in with ESPN as well. It was it was definitely a, a, a certain memories for me. I mean, gosh, 2007. I was 29 years old. Jesus Christ, <laughs> I hadn't even turned 30 yet. God Almighty, we're so old now. <laughs> but Chris, man, talk about this Hurricanes team. I mean, we you you've experienced the, I mean, a lot of mostly downs since oh. 304. I mean, you, I don't know what year you were, you started off with Kane's time. Was it like 01 or 2000? I don't know. It was what 03, year yeah. 03. 03. The year so after we, the, the loss there. So we, we, we both missed the, the real winning at UM <laughs> in covering the team. Um, talk about the, the, this year's team, 8 and 0. Obviously, I have opinions on the Florida State game, but talk about how it's been this year, at least with the fact that you're finally looking at, yeah, the team that went 10 and 0 in 17. But that team did not have talent, did not have Cam. Cam Ward is, is next level. Talk about this team and Cam Ward. Yeah, well, you know, going back to 03, it, it's odd when you really look at the year by year. And I, I've done the over under recently in terms of Miami's projected win total coming into a year. And it's seven straight years of uh, falling short of the over under mark. And really, when you look back, even the 03 season, that, that was a year with those six or first rounders with, with Sean and, and and Vilma and those guys, they won 11 games, but it felt like a disappointment. And that's really, if we were to summarize how the seasons have gone, uh, just a lot of disappointing, underwhelming results. You, you touched on 17 there. They go 10-0 and out of the gate. And at that point, overperformed, I, I felt like. But I think when people look back at, at 17, it's tough to look at it like, oh, that's the only 10-win season. It was a great season, a great team. Because of how it ended, the disappointing, you get to number two, you lose the finale there in the regular season to Pitt, you get blown out in the ACC title game, and then you lose your bowl game, and all of a sudden it's a three-game losing streak, and it doesn't feel the same. So when you think about this season and and just current state of the program with where they're at right now, I don't see that happening. Now, they could lose their final game of the year, there's no doubt about that, or they could still have losses coming, but 
I don't think this team's going to hit that that complete downfall. I don't see that coming because of how well the quarterback is and Cam Ward, and that's what makes this team really exciting. And they've got a lot of playmakers around them, so and they're still there. You're starting to see the run game really come alive, which is good. But the other thing I, I keep talking about, and I said this before the season, and, and they've done better than I expected this year. You know, Cam Ward it was good last year at times, but if you look at his metrics, his QBR rating, you know, those kind of numbers – They're not overwhelming last season. He's outperformed that. He's playing better this year, and I think that's why you're seeing the success. But the other thing that I I really felt like this team had a chance to be good was the amount of veterans they have all across the board. I just believe in that for a team, you know, roster construction. So you look at running backs. They've got guys with experience and receivers, you know, the tight ends there, you know, all across the board on defense, you know, and I know the defense isn't performing nearly as well as the offense. They still have a lot of guys on the D-line, linebackers with experience. You know, they're, they're secondary, a little shaky at times, obviously. But they've got a, some guys with experience there, too. So I think that's the thing. I, I think they're driven to, to be successful. And, and really, when we look at, in particular, these next four games in the regular season, Miami should win all four of these. Now, are you looking at, like, are they a 12-0 team? And at this point in the season, it's not about going 12 and 0. There's only four games left, you know, in the regular season. It's just about going 4 and 0. Can you win these four games regardless of, you know, what, what's happened to begin the season? And it's, Rudy, you know, I follow the Chiefs all the time. I know everyone's talking about can they three peat? Well, they don't have to three peat. That's not where they're at right now. They just have to win this year. You know, and I think if you look at uh, the regular season for for the Hurricanes, I think that's the same thing and you kind of don't really look at the, the 12 and 0 in totality, but just kind of look at these four games and and see how the rest of it goes. I think they're going to be fine, even though they've kind of shown some weaknesses at times. Looking at Cam, I mean, Cam Ward, you mentioned, you know, you didn't, I didn't know that he would be this good. You know, you looked at him in Washington state, that was a six to 16. I mean, I think they lost at 1.5 in a row or something like that. I'm not completely sure exactly. I know they they had a, a, a lengthy losing streak. Is this an example of when you have is, is this an example to you of the fact that when people would complain on a yearly basis about Miami doesn't have the talent, does this show you that the Miami actually does have the talent and all you needed was a, a legitimate quarterback who was a, who would be allowed to do his thing and play? I th- I think so, but I also think Cam's better than the other quarterbacks that, that we've seen come through here. You know, I don't mm-hmm. think it's just about the talent, but but certainly when we talk about underperforming results, it has to do with, you know, they they did have talent. And I think sometimes, and I think even now, and maybe now is the time to do that where you're looking at the other programs around the country and, and as a barometer for Miami. But I thought too often times over the years, people were looking at, you know, who was running college football, those teams, you know, the Georgias, the Alabamas, you know, Ohio States, just to name a few. And I thought Miami just needed to, you know, kind of center in and, and and really focus on their conference. And I know, you know, it was almost mocked the way that Al Golden would talk about just win the division. But I thought there was some truth in that, in that the fact that this team, this program, just need to really focus on the, the conference and, and what are your conference teams doing. And I think if we just look at it like that, but again, this year's a little bit different because of the playoff picture. Miami's ranked fifth right now. So certainly they put themselves in that conversation firmly as one of those top teams in college football. But I think over the years, they, they got a little uh, a, a, too far away from really looking at the teams across from them and the teams in their division. And I think that's what they needed to do. And yeah, I think the talent is is there. I, I like the the amount of playmakers that that Cam has. And, and I think they've got a, a couple guys that, that aren't playing that can make plays if they're asked to. So I like that his ability. I, I think he's playing at a high level. I, I think he certainly early on in the year was getting plenty of opportunities to throw the ball. We're starting to see the run game mixed in, as I mentioned earlier. But yeah, he's certainly given a, a lot of freedom to do his thing and not just that, Rudy. Like he's providing real results. And it's hard to take away stuff from him, uh, scale back at all because he's playing so well. And he's been the reason, the the number one reason. There's no doubt about it of why they've had this success that they've had this year. And um, he, he's he's backing it up week in and week out. You mentioned, you know, Miami's ranked number five right now. Um, are they ranked number five on both polls now or, or is it just one? But I'll, nonetheless, yeah. I know they're ranked number five on one of the polls at the very least. And there was a few weeks in a row where you're sitting here saying, okay, they lost, they lost, they lost. Why did Miami jump even one spot? 
And I look, the, I go back and look at the the lack of respect for the ACC that exists. And we discussed this actually yesterday um, when we spoke. You have teams that are coming up. If Syracuse was in the SEC, Syracuse is ranked in the top 15, more than likely at six and two. You get a six and two SEC team, and they might have beaten no one all year and lost their two tough games, and they're ranked in the top 20. Your Syracuse, you have a bad day where Tyler uh, was a Kyle McCord throws for five picks and gives basically here's it on the plate to Pitt. I mean, I think Pitt had 100 yards and they're up 31 nothing at some point or something. It was ridiculous. They were blowing them out and they won that game. But Syracuse is a good team. Georgia Tech is not a bad team. Who else is on? At Duke, you're not six and two by accident. So like you have. It, it, you have these situations where if you put these teams in the SEC, and I'm, and I'm not saying they're going to be 6-2 and two in the SEC, but Alabama loses. If they win out, I think they're back in the playoff. Um, Ohio State loses. They drop to four, <laughs> you know, from two or whatever it was or one. I, I, the, the, is the ACC being overlooked again? And is it fair or not fair? I think maybe a little bit. I, I think you feel strongly, more strongly about it than I do. The, the one thing that I think that just takes time to develop, and you touched on Alabama as a, an example, is just the reputation of these schools and not necessarily uh, the history of their programs. But when you look back, you know, Pitt, for example, they're, they're kind of standing out to me right now. You know, they, they're undefeated in conference. They're 7-0, and but they're ranked 18th. You know, I know we look at things from a Miami standpoint, but – they're they're seven and zero. Oh. It, it, it's funny with Pitt. You know, I was just in. You know, I covered the Dolphins Cardinals game and talking to DJ Dallas and James Connor popped in and and just said, you know, Pitt's undefeated. You know, he's excited about his team. You know, Pitt won three games last year. They were three and nine. So it's just going to take a little bit of time. Like, is this team for real? I think that's what you're seeing. You know, Syracuse last year six and seven, new quarterback in McCord. How good are they really? I think it's just going to take time. I think it might shake itself out as the year goes on. You know, you're starting to see SMU in the polls a little bit higher. They're taking some time as they make that conference adjustment. You know, you touched on Georgia Tech as a team. That's intriguing. Again, seven and six a year ago. So you're talking about teams that it's not like they they did a bunch of stuff last year where it just automatically feels like they're going to get that automatic respect for this year. And I think some of the time it, it just takes time to really sort this stuff out, especially with all the transfers. You know, even with Miami, Honestly, I was a little surprised of how fast they rose the polls considering the year they had last year. They started, you know, right there at 19, you know, when they started the season. And, and it didn't take long at all for Miami to, to jump up to 12. They were the highest rising team in the AP Top 25 early on. And they've, you know, you can argue, should they be higher? What about the teams ahead of them? And right now, I, I think what you're seeing right now, it's hard, you know, to be a top five, top six team, I mean, there is a lot of pressure on you for style points, for who you're playing, a lot of that stuff. I think you're not viewing it the same way as you look at a top 25 team, for example. And right now, with Miami's schedule, ACC, it, you know, it's just not favorable for the Hurricanes, and they've got to win these games. But, you know, even when you look at it right now, who have they beaten? And I understand that's going to pop up more as the season goes on. That's why you need, you know, just for perception, you need – Miami's opponents. You need Louisville, you know, to kind of run off some wins here. You know, these teams that they've beaten. Virginia Tech have a season that many people expected. Florida, you know, even get some wins just to kind of help Miami as the season goes along. So I, I think with schedule and kind of with some of the stuff you're, you're, you're talking about with ACC reputation, I think it just takes a little bit more time. Uh, and, and I think it could, I think it could shake itself out, especially if these ACC teams, if Clemson, you know, if they continue to win, Miami, you know, if it's Pitt and SMU, all these teams kind of continue to win. And obviously SMU Pitt play this week. So someone's going to take a loss there. But I think it just takes a little bit more time, even though here we are in November. And I see Pitt has SMU this week. They're at SMU. And then they host Clemson in two weeks. And then they still have to go to Louisville. So they have a, a tough road. I think Louisville is a very good team. I mean, I, I think it's outrageous that people, I mean, they lost a few games in a row, but it wasn't like they were, they were losing by a score. You know, and, and I think that's what, what drives me crazy as a, as a Hurricanes fan when, you know, you have a conference right now with four teams that are 6-1, and 7-0, and or 7-1, and one and 8-0. And, oh. and you only have – and they're all ranked, but they're not ranked. with. I mean, SMU being ranked 
twentieth at seven and one is ridiculous. Pitt being ranked eight was it eighteenth at at seven and zero? Oh, it's ridiculous. If you're seven and zero oh in any other conference, hell, even the Big Twelve, which I think is a dumpster fire of a conference. BYU and Iowa State are both ranked eleven and twelve or some ten, eleven and twelve or something like that. It, the massive levels of disrespect in this conference, it's it's mind blowing to me. But you know, jumping into this, like, then it bugs me because, look, I, I think I think Georgia probably is better than Miami. I'm not going to delude myself. I'm not going to go fan 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 crazy. You know what I mean? But they have a loss. In fact, it was a really it wasn't a great. They were down thirty in that game, um, and they struggled against Kentucky. Didn't Florida just beat Kentucky, if I'm not mistaken? Am I not mistaken? I'm, I'm, yeah, you know, and Miami at, kicked the shit out of Florida. <laughs> so at Florida. So, and I think actually Florida's been a little bit better than I think people expected. So, although everyone in Gainesville wants to fire, fire, fire Billy Napier, but that he's, I think they've been better than they, than people expected. Looking at the FSU game that we just had. You mentioned style points. When you give up a touchdown with 30 seconds left and a 36-7 game turns into a 36-14 game, does that hurt the style point? I think that maybe from a fan perspective, but, you know, I, and I know they tacked on a touchdown, but Miami did too. You know, two minutes mm -hmm. left, they tacked on a touchdown. So that's the thing. You're trying to score points to tack it on, and, and then your defense gives it up. You know, and I know we we had that long conversation about this game, this game, Rudy. Um, I didn't, you know, even from a, you know, I know fans were disappointed. Look, I, I think fans, this is the reality. Everyone knows Florida State's really struggled. Miami's really good this year in relation to both of these teams, the way they've been in recent years. Florida State's not having a good year. Miami's having a better year than they've had in years. And you want to see that in the scoreboard in this rivalry game, which has happened for both teams on either side, you know. Florida State was up and they've blown out Miami. Uh, Miami's been up and they've blown out Florida State. That's what you wanted to see in this one. And Miami had been putting up so many points. So to do that, you know, to have one of these big games like you saw against Florida, you wanted to see that against your, your in-state rival in the ACC. I understand it. I just, I think that the bottom line was they were the better team throughout, regardless of the, however the score looked, even it was when it was 14-7, it just felt like Miami was still a better team and they were going to pull ahead and they were in control and they were, you know, and mm -hmm. sometimes in football, especially college football, the score doesn't always reflect, you know, the dominance of a team or, you know, just how, how the game looks between the two teams. And, but I just think I understand the disappointment, but it, I don't think it, for me, it didn't necessarily reveal a, a bunch of weaknesses in, in my mind moving forward. And I think that's how we've got to view this team a little bit right now because Everything is on the line. You know, they've got to – essentially, they've got to win these four games to get to the ACC championship game. You know, that that's the goal. You know, they want to win their first conference title in school history. That's the goal right now. And I think – I don't think – now, there's some things that, that are a little bit worrisome and a little concerning maybe moving forward. But, again, when you look at the opponents coming up, you know, I know you touched on Georgia Tech, but their quarterback situation, you know, I, I think without Haynes King, they're a different team. You know, and we'll see. But I think the bottom line is if Miami plays the way Miami's been playing all year, they'll be fine in these games coming up. So um, looking at the, looking at that Florida State game, the one thing that, that jumped out to me was it, it was the lack of recognition. or and, and, and I don't know if that was game plan or if that was Cam Ward. I, I don't think it was Cam Ward. I don't see him really audible all that much. Do you see him? I don't know if you see him audible too much. I don't think they audible all that much. The, the, the continuous screen, wide receiver screens that go nowhere. Um, they ran a lot of those against Florida State. I watched, I had people debating me, and I said that Florida State blitzed a lot. And they said, no, they didn't. They played, they had two two deep safeties. And while that may be true that they had two deep safeties, they had their they had a safety blitz at least three times in the first half of that game. And there was such a lack of recognition by Miami and the wide receiver coming from that safety side to, to for a hot route to a, do a for, I mean to adjust his route rather than you're running a fly or a nine look like a nine they they could have changed that to a slant and if you hit that slant that's a touchdown more than likely um and those are the things that stood out to me and then on top of that I counted the FSU blitz like 11 or 12 times in the first half alone so if they're saying that FSU didn't blitz I think that's just completely false um looking at a game like that 
do you ever get worried about once again the clock management of of this team? I mean, it seemed like it's seemingly a never ending occurrence with this team with burning clock. They had a they burned 35 seconds at one point from the 50 yard line um, at the end of the first half. Ended up having to s- settle for a field goal because they ran out of time. What are your thoughts of that and the continued? It's continued because it's been going on for quite some time. We know. Yeah, and I think it's going. I I don't think it's automatically corrected. I think what we've seen and look, it's not just you know. I know everyone wants to point. It's not just the Georgia Tech ending last year. It, it's end of half no. stuff. It, it's mm-hmm. it's just kind of it's always been there, and it's hard to erase that. And look, the bottom line is this. And Ma- I know Mario felt like he addressed it at the beginning of the year by saying they hired someone to to handle this. And look, it is your job. That is your job as the head coach. In football, everybody knows that. That's one of the thing. That's one of the main things that you're in control with on game days and how you're evaluated. So, I think just tightening up on those kind of things and really taking it, because I, I I would hate for them to to have things fall apart. And I think this is where everybody. Maybe this is exactly what you're thinking. You'd hate for things to fall apart because they're not on point for certain things when the games when the stakes matter even more. You know. Did it matter against Florida State? Not really, you know. I uh, because obviously Florida State struggled and Miami pulled away. It wasn't a big deal. So I think people, oh, look at the results. It's not a big deal. But I think with these games, everything matters. And Rudy, one thing I do want to point out because I think this is what we're going to see down the stretch. I, I want to make this clear: there's film on Miami. It's not anymore. Oh, what is Cam going to do? How are they going to build their offense? Are they going to run the ball or what are they going to look like? I think what we're going to see now is teams know what Miami wants to do. And I do wonder if some of that had to do in that Florida State game uh, of the game planning, because, you know, Cam Ward didn't have his best game, you know, of the season, you know, is is his worst statistical season and they still won. But I I wonder if there's some things that the teams are now going to use moving forward. It'll just be a matter of if it's going to matter or not, if Miami is able to overcome it. But yeah, I, I think until these kinds of things are, are completely erased. I think it's always going to be an issue or at least a little bit of a concern. I think the thing you're, you're hoping for uh, if you're a Miami fan is they're not in these real tight games where it really matters, but we have seen that them already in close game. The cow game was certainly uh, however it got to it eventually became a close game. And, and yeah, with everything on the line, uh, you just want to make sure it doesn't come down to those kinds of mistakes um, and, and those kinds of miscues because you don't get these games back. And I think that's the big thing with, with these games down the stretch is there's, there's so much on the line that, that you just want to make sure you're really on point. And, you know, I know we, you know, kind of going back to that Ohio state game, right? Like the way that that one ended with Oregon um, with, with the quarterback there, just, it is what it is. And you move on now, both teams are still up towards the top, but it's just a point of like, just not quite on point with time management, I can, can really affect you. And I think with where things are right now you, you, for Miami and where they are ranked and everything, you'd, you'd hate for you not to get an opportunity because of something like this. Yeah, and yeah, definitely. As a, as a fan, I would not – I they have to make the playoffs. Like that's that's like – that's, you know, the, it's, it, you can't – it's playoffs or bust. I'm not sitting here saying you got to win a national championship. That would be beautiful. That would be exciting as hell. And if and if they were to win a national championship playing like I thought they played like garbage against Florida State. I've said it. I did a video on it. I thought they played like garbage. Did I think they was I ever worried that they were going to lose that game? No. FSU is like a JV high school football team. That, that that is the worst Florida State football team I've seen in my lifetime. They look inept. And and for everyone that was sitting here on my boards telling me, oh FSU has the one of the best defenses Miami's going to play all year. No, they don't. They're, they're the eighth worst defense actually on Miami's schedule by statistics, points and yards allowed. So, I, you know, we've seen Cam Ward pick apart a Cal defense that's top 30. We've seen him pick apart other defenses. There'll be other defenses that are coming up. You, but you mentioned this about there's now film on him, right? Isn't it not the job of the offensive coordinator, Dawson, to dictate and not allow – to be dictated to when people say, oh, you take what they gave you. No, your job is to create stuff to counteract that so that you're not having an 18 play drive every possession. Miami's a big play offense to me. 18 play drives, even if you score, 
they kind of play into what the other team wants you to do. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing to moving forward with this team is playing to their strengths, which I believe is a passing offense. And look, I I, I know they want to run the ball, and this is what kind of has me a little bit of worried in, in a sense. And I know they've had success. They had success against Florida State. I give them credit. You know, when they run well, I'll give them credit. You know, there, there's no doubt about that. And I'm not trying to ignore when they do play well. I just worry at times, or, or if it's going to happen, and I don't know when it's going to happen, but I just worry that they're going to really lean on a run game that falls into a game where it's either average, a little bit better than average, but then all of a sudden, either you're not scoring points for whatever reason. I think this is what we saw against Florida State, where you're draining the clock. Both teams, Miami doesn't have as many offensive opportunities, as many offensive drives as you would like. And everyone knows when you're – and a team that's trying to pull off the upset, that's what you want to do. You want to shorten the game. You want to try to prevent that. Against Miami, you know, Florida State did do a good job of holding Miami to field goals. Now, you, you sprinkle in, if you have a better offense, you sprinkle in a couple turnovers, all, all of a sudden it's a really tight game, and that's what I worry about. I worry that they're going to get away from Cam Ward and really, like you said, dictating what they do well and, and kind of lean on the run game a little too much and take the ball out of Cam's hands either because of what the defense is doing or just philosophy or whatever it might be. Now, this is going to be an interesting game against Duke because it's it's flipped. You know, Duke is, comes into the, the game second to last in run defense during ACC play, and they're second in pass defense. So I, I would think Miami is going to try to run the ball in this game, and uh, I, th I think they'll still win. But it's just games like that. You know, you just don't want to fall into this thing of, you know, not – really striking when you can. And I think the thing with Cam, I think getting him going again in, in all games, I, I think is the key for this team to be successful. And I think that's how they're going to win games. And, and I think they're very good when they throw the ball around. They still have all of their weapons. It's not like guys are hurt or anything like that. They have all those guys and, and their top four guys. I, I've said that in terms of wide receivers, you mix in Arroyo in that mix. A lot of teams in the conference would like to have any one of those five guys and Cam's got them all, and he sprinkles it around. We, we touched on the tight end, like to get him more involved. But, you know, they, they've got weapons, and that's where I think there's their biggest strength, and that's what they need to play to, and that's how they need to dictate, you know, regardless of how teams are playing them. And I know that can be a little bit difficult in football, right? With boxes, your looks, your safety looks, what are you doing with your safeties uh, to defend? But I, I just think Miami's got to find ways. It cannot just be, oh, they took things away and we just couldn't do it. it that's not how this is going to go. I think you still got to find ways to be successful. Now, if you're gonna, if they're gonna drop everyone, then you still got to throw the ball and, and make shorter passes, whatever it might be. You've got to be able to counter. It can't just be throw your hands up. There's nothing we could do, and, and we'll see if that does play a factor down the stretch here. So sorry, I muted myself. Um, a wide receiver slant pass can turn into a touchdown. It can be a 10 yard pass that goes for a touchdown, but you don't typically see a wide receiver screen go for a touchdown, you know, especially not with us. Or you also have concerns of a holding call because wide receivers generally can't block all that well. Um, so, you know, when I look at the, the you know, I, when I looked at that FSU game, that was my biggest, my biggest takeaway was you let FSU dictate what you did. And that's eaten. And like, that should never happen. You, 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 you can't allow that to happen. You have to you have to counter that, and that's your job as a coordinator to to come up with ways to counter that. Um, that said, you know you have Duke coming up. You have the Manny Diaz thing. Um, Manny Diaz has Duke at six and two. Former University of Miami head coach. Uh, they have a quarterback in Malik Murphy, who's who's who's. I'm not saying he's great, but he's a big dude. He's six five, two forty. Miami has trouble tackling. You know, when you look at that, that that is a, that is a concern for me. Um, is that Miami doesn't tackle well? I I don't think anyone in this in in football now tackles well. I mean, we grew up to different football where people hit these guys today. They 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 get tapped and it's a it's a penalty flag or you know you know they're more worried about you know how they look with their uniform. I mean, I saw a hurricane player that pretty much turned his pants into biker shorts. He wore no knee pads. His pants were almost eight inches above his knee, which would be a penalty. I mean, I don't even know that that was allowed. I thought you did a penalty for that. Um, I'm more worried about tackling on the defensive side because naturally they got absolutely blitzed 
by Cal, Tech, and, and Louisville, do you have any concerns about a quarterback who's 6'5", 240, who's a big guy, tough to take down, and, you know, who was a four-star recruit, went to Texas first before ending up at Duke? Yeah, with, with Malik, I think the thing is he throws the ball. He doesn't run it as well, or that's not what he looks to do. He's going to drop back and throw it, and I, I, yeah. I like the receivers with, the, with what they're able to do. You know, when you watch him, and just kind of even going back to that SMU game that I watched, you watch him, and sometimes you look at the results and he, and his stats, and some you know, especially with his efficiency rating, his completion mm. percent isn't very good or as high as you'd like to see it. But I think the potential's there, and I think you know he's going to be able to throw the ball a little bit. I think for the defense, my overall thing is Rudy, this defense I doesn't have to play as well as the offense. I I think they can play complementary football. They don't have to play at that A level as the offense. I know you would always like that in football. You always want your offense and defense both be really good. I don't think that's where the defense is, but I think the defense can be good enough to to win games, and that's what's important right now. You know, I think the biggest thing for the defense is they cannot be the reason why they lose a game. Now, they might not be the reason why they win, but they cannot give up these huge plays, just just give up a, a bunch of stuff and and really let an offense really get going like what we've seen, you know, in some of these games where the other team's scoring 30 points and, and really putting it on them. And they've got to be able to either whatever they need to do, but they can't give up the big plays. They, they've got to either, you know, like you said, on tackling, just make tackles. You know, don't miss tackles. I know that's easier said than done, but – it just can't be those those mistakes. And for me, you got to lean on that defensive line. And it comes down to your better players have to make the plays. And the defensive line is, you know, Reuben Bain in particular. He's got to have a big finish here. Didn't have the start that it would he like because he couldn't be out there with the injury. But he's back now. And he's going to be a, a big factor in this whole thing. He's got to play well, you know. And I know it's tough at times at D-line you know, whether it's double teams or scheme, you know, whether, you know, just different things that they can do with the offensive line, but they've got to be able to find a way to make plays. And, you know, everybody, everybody on defense has to make plays. You touched on, you know, missed tackles and, and yeah, it, it's, it's an issue. Um, but it just, again, it cannot be, you know, it can't be a five yard play that turns into 50, you know, it, it's gotta be, you know, get everybody there and just make a play. Just be steady. I think that's the thing. They've just got to be worried about being steady. Lean on the offense. Complimentary football, too, is not always about, you know, playing well and both sides playing well. Look, if the defense isn't as good, just simply isn't as good, then the offense has to pick it up. And that's how they're going to win games this year. And that's how they've been winning games. And I think the defense will get better. I don't I don't see them having the the drastic games that they had during that stretch. But, you know, are, are they going to – they're not going to pitch a shutout like they get, they did against Ball State, you know. So I think it's a little bit of that middle ground and, and just kind of, you know, just be steady uh, and and just make enough plays. And, you know, against Cal, that, that stood out to me. You know, they're trying to mount the comeback. They had three stops there late in the game. And, you know, the defense did step up. So there's been moments uh, where they've done well. Uh, but certainly, you know, just not, not the totality of, of creating a bunch of stuff we did see some of that early on, you know, the Florida game in particular. Yeah. Uh, uh, so they also have a running back star. Thomas averaged about four and a half yards of carry. Um, what are your thoughts on this Manny Diaz dynamic? Do you, you know how, you know how soft this world has got, I mean, the word, God, I'm old. I feel old every day. I feel when you think about yeah, how long it was. Here? Are they going to go soft and do some type of freaking weak-ass montage video for Manny Diaz on the screen before the game or during the game, the way the Heat seems to do for a guy that plays for the Heat for two years? <laughs> it's like I don't think I, so. I mean, I, I hope to God not. I don't I don't think so because of how it ended, but we, we've not seen this, right? We've seen a bunch of coaches come and go over the years, but, uh, you know, we saw Randy, you know, obviously as a coordinator come back. That's different, head coach. Mm -hmm. Look, you know, I, I've – after we saw early on that Florida state wasn't, didn't have a good team. I felt like there's three teams. Crystal ball just cannot lose to this season. Just cannot. Now you don't want to lose any game, especially with how it's going, it's gone on, but you cannot lose to Manny Diaz with all that transpired there. And uh, I, you know, Florida state, they couldn't lose that game last week because of how bad Florida state was. That would have been awful. And then the other team to me is SMU with all those former players that's not going to feel good if they do face them in the ACC title game. You cannot lose that game. That would feel bad. Now, again, you don't want to lose any game. Uh, you don't want to get upset, but I, I can't imagine what that would be. But no, with how things 
it is interesting because the Manny Diaz, you know, obviously he had success to get the job, you know, as a defensive coordinator and the excitement that he was able to provide that, as you mentioned, that 10 win team that we touched on earlier, uh, that, that kind of success as a defensive coordinator allowed him to get the head coaching job. And then, you know, they decided to move on from that, but, um, I, I, I don't think so. Uh, it is interesting if they are going to do some, I can't imagine. I, I well, I know I, they're not going to want that on the current staff. They're not going to want to see anything, uh, to do with that. And honestly, I think you got to be real careful because how much do you want to, you know, when you touch on some heat stuff, that's way different. Regular season, uh, professional sports, one of 82 kind of thing. This is a huge game for my, they cannot, uh, you know, they just can't lose this game with everything on the line and, you know, building up the opposing coach uh, <laughs> on a montage. I, I don't see that as a, as a good idea when, you know, this isn't, this isn't like they're playing FAMU and one of their own is coaching the other team. You know, this is an ACC opponent, as you mentioned, that's six and two. And, um, and really that SMU game with all those turnovers, they should have won that game. So, um, I think Duke's a threat. I, I think Miami still win. So I think maybe that does play into it. Um, with this I mean, one, my, no, Miami's idea. a bit, Miami's a three touchdown favorite for what I'm saying. I mean, I look, I expect yeah. Miami to win. You know, I expect Miami to win the game, but I'm, you know, I'm, again, I'm old school. All this stuff where I see montages of former players on other teams, the Miami Heat do that crap every freaking time they play someone who even played for them for a couple of years. The thank you posts, just, uh, like, get the fuck out of here, man. I don't want to see that shit. Like, this is that, this is competition. You want to go hug the guy in the back room? Go ahead and hug him in the back room. Don't do some video and praising that guy because Manny Diaz, as far as I'm concerned, should have been shown the door when he lost to FIU. Like, that was the most unforgivable loss in the history of Miami Hurricane football. You lost Rudy, to FIU. When when people ask me about the loss, all of the losses, that's the one to me that stands out as the worst. And, and I, I understand the Georgia Tech, the way it lost. I understand Middle Tennessee. FIU Virginia, was worse. The Bowl, but the FIU. And, Rudy, I, you know, I didn't even grow up here, but I know what that oh is. God. And I, I can't believe that we ever watched that happen. That really did happen. That really, like, it, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare that will never go away. Like, it's like the, it's like for me, the Yankees blowing a 3-0 series lead against the Red Sox and, and 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 losing in the in the ALCS. Like, that is a nightmare that will never go away. And we don't play FIU anymore because of what's happened in the past and the the fist fight in, in the Orange Bowl, and, well, throwing helmets and and and, and crutches and all the stuff that we saw in that game. Where do you see what, what do you see it for this team as obviously I think this game this tomorrow is huge. And, and I think they don't have to just win. They have to win win. You know, that's just the way I feel. You have to show like you have to establish some level of dominance and not have these 38, 35 games, 52, 45. I've been giving up 45 points. It's just ridiculous. And 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 where do you see this team as it's ceiling could this team win a national championship it's hard for me to say yes on that in, in terms of the jump that they had last year into mm. this year with the defense you know when i touch on the defense look i'm not saying uh that it doesn't need to be better i'm not even saying that they're good you know i i, I do see i recognize that there are issues as far as the national title goes the only thing i would say yeah i think this game is important with what you're saying look there's only you know on the schedule after the duke game there's only one other home game you know, you're, you're at the point in your season where you do need to make statements and, you know, they've kind of got, they did, they got by on some games and, you know, kind of that three game stretch, you know, and I understand it's conference play, but as we mentioned earlier, these aren't ranked teams, you know, they've got to start, you know, when you're, again, when you're evaluated as a top five team, as what you said, a national, are they a national title contender? Start, start, you know, really pulling away and, and playing your best football. That's what you want to do down the stretch. I know the Florida State game, you know, it ended up being a 22-point game. You had concerns. Other people did, too, that it didn't look particularly great against that team. And I think what you're saying is you want to see that. Get back to it. You know, Cam Ward, is he going to win the Heisman? You know, just kind of leave some, leave no doubt. Like, really elevate their passing game and, and really come on strong down the stretch because I don't think they're the team that's playing the best right now in the ACC. I think Clemson's playing better right now. You know, I, I think you want to go into that game feeling, you know, if Miami gets there, you want to be feeling like, okay, we, we're the one that, that's playing better. You know, what you want to have this this strong stretch down the season. I, I think they can win the ACC. I, I think they can get there. Now, and then after that, we will see how matchups go and how other teams look for playoff stuff. 
to me, there's it's almost like a second season. It's hard for me sometimes to wrap my head around this team being in the playoff, considering we've seen things fall apart. Um, so I, I've been just, it's odd because I'm all about looking ahead uh, to a certain point, but I, I'm really, really focused on, can they get to Charlotte? You know, can they get there? Can they win it? And I think right now they, they definitely can get there. And I think they have a potential of winning it. They got to play better. And I think they've got to improve a little bit. I think it is good. I, I do want to make this clear. I think it's good that the, the run game is playing better. Again, I just think, you know, I think they've got to make sure that they're not going away from from Cam Ward in the passing game. But because of him, I think that's where all of this comes, you know, the confidence, the belief, you know, everything that you think that this season could be, potentially be, is because of Cam Ward, what he's able to do, and everybody just understanding the importance of the quarterback position in football and how much of a difference that can make. And, and I, it's hard to bet against Cam, you know, and we've seen him face some really tough deficits in game, and he's been able to pull through and, and play well. There's a couple of receivers I want to ask you about and talk about real quick before we wrap up in the next few minutes. Xavier Restrepo. I, I mean, could you have ever envisioned the type of career this guy's had at Miami when he came to Miami? I mean, you got a five, was he five, nine? I mean, he's a, lat, lat, a Latino receiver. I mean, that doesn't, I mean, you might only, you might only have that in South Florida because I don't think you have too many Latino receivers anywhere else in the country. Um, but looking at them, I mean, this kid has if he drops the ball, I'm shocked. Like, I'm shocked. His hands are unbelievable. His route running is fantastic. I see him as a as, as a pro for many, many years. Like, like he will be a, a – he, he's a Wes Welker. I mean, I mean, obviously, I'm comparing him to Wes Welker, Bre- Brexton – even a Bre- – I think he's better than Brexton Berrios. Um, who's the other one? Amendola. Uh, but looking at a guy like him, I mean, talk about the – the emergence of, of Xavier Restrepo, he's now creeping up on every hurricane record and, and what he's meant to this program because he's definitely true, blue, true to the heart Miami Hurricane football player, not bouncing around like so many. I, I hate the transfer portal. I hate NIL. I'll say it out loud, folks. NIL has not been good for college football except for this year because Cam Ward's in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, I, I think there's so many issues with, with college football now. But talk about Xavier Restrepo and from what you've seen for the, his, what, five years now? Yeah, such a unique journey going back to, you know, I remember watching him at St. Thomas. And, you know, other people obviously have watched him even before that and then going to Deerfield. And and just kind of seeing his grind, you know, he gets to Miami, you know, was not a highly touted guy. You know, look at the recruiting rankings, not very highly touted at all, you know, even amongst the receiver groups. And I just remember early on in his career uh, at UM, even though he wasn't playing, you know, known as a hard worker, and then you'd see him make plays. And then when we were able to be at practices, seeing him make plays and, you know, he stuck with it. He stayed at UM, you know, this is where he wanted to be. And it just felt like, you know, he was really coming on there. And I thought the 22 season, you know, the stats don't show it. It started off well, then he dealt with the injury. And then just never got back on track. But I thought that was going to be his breakout year based on what we've seen. And look, and I know people might doubt him, but it's been a long time before they've had a receiver better than him on the roster uh, in 21 there with Rambo, you know, that, and then after that, it's been him. He's been, he's their best guy. I don't know what to tell you. You go to practice, he beats everybody. You know, he makes plays uh, one-on-ones in the spring, just watching him torch everybody. Michelle Powell, I'm sure it was like, is this for me after as many plays as he gave up to, to Restrepo in practice? It was, it was unbelievable whether he was guarded close or not. Restrepo was coming down with the ball. And I remember in fall camp, and this is interesting to me in fall camp. I, I kind of pulled him aside when we were able, I was able to have an interview with him and just kind of asked him about certain things. And one of the things he told me was he still feels doubted and, not just with opponents. And I think that's an easy thing to do. Uh, whoever, you know, they're not really sure exactly how good he is. But he says even on the practice field and his his teammates, he still feels wow. that. And with all that he did last year and, and what he continues to do this year, you know, the, the the fact that he still feels like he's got stuff to prove and to be the best, you know, that kind of thing. But look, he's been their best receiver. He's a really good player. Uh, he has to get the ball. They've got to get him the ball. I think it's great that he developed the the connection with Cam Ward. And I think it just comes down to, you know, Cam realized he's the best one and he is, and he might not be the guy that 
that looks the part in terms of his height, you know, in terms of his downfield speed, when you talk about height speed combination, but he's just their best guy. He's their, he's their best receiver. As far as the pro stuff, I guess we'll wait and see just as a college receiver, He's great. They got to get him the ball all the time. He's made so many big plays. He's such a huge part of this team. And, you know, I, I you know and the other thing he said to me, a couple other things, but just one other thing I want to point out too, that, that I feel like we're seeing for the most part this season, he, he told me he wanted to be better at consistency and he knows his numbers were good last year. Really good. The, the, the record year, you know, with all the receptions there and the yards were there too, but he wanted to be, consistent not just game to game but within a game you know he didn't want to have a good first half bad second half or disappear or the vice versa and i think even at times th there's been a little bit of that this year which is it tends to happen with the receiver just the nature of the position but for the most part i i think he's been very consistent uh game to game and within a game and i think that's what you're seeing also he was really big on contributing to winning and he knows last year's he didn't say the words of empty stats but i think he feels some of that and he wanted to be a part of a winner and um, certainly he is. He, he's a big part of it. And arguably, if he's not the best receiver in the AC, certainly one of a uh, very short list. When you mentioned that he still feels like he's doubted by teammates, that's do you think that's a um, self-created thing that he has to continue in his own mind because it's what drives him? Or I mean, you can't put yourself in his brain, but I, I mean, I can't. If they, I can't imagine his teammates really doubt him, and that has to be at this point something that he puts in his own brain that these these dudes doubt me. I'm gonna bust their ass in practice and and, and stuff like. I mean, what do you think of something like that when you hear that? That's, that's I think wild. maybe a little bit of that, Rudy. Uh, I think we hear all athletes at all levels yeah. feel some sort of doubt or <laughs> people don't think I'm this and that, and regardless mm. of their ranking or or any of this, how they're regarded. I think some of that. I think honestly, I think some of it is. He's got a lot of player uh, teammates to prove because there's so many new guys. Like I think that's some of it, whether it's freshmen or transfers. You know, not everybody knows everything about X. You know, coming to this team, so maybe it has something to do with that. Now, on the flip side, I did not talk to the defenders and say, "Hey, are you doubting X?" You know, I don't think I'd get the right answer with that. Uh, you know, if you flip <laughs> it around. But I think it's a little bit of it. But I do understand why, and I think the newcomer thing. Um, and again. You know, he's not the prototype. And I, I'm just going to say that the height speed combo with the receiver, because I think that, you know, it's not like he's Tommy Streeter, 6'5", and really fast, where it's just obvious, like, oh, that guy's a huge threat. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't take long. And, 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 you know, it's not like I'm the only one. It, anybody can see it. Anybody that goes out there, anybody that watches him play can realize how good he is. And it doesn't take long. It does not take long to watch him uh, either in a practice or game to realize how good he is and what his success is, is, is been so earned. And I think that's a thing that a lot of people can respect if that, that he went out and worked for it. And we've seen other guys over the years, Rudy, of covering the hurricanes that absolutely have gone out and worked for it, regardless of their recruiting rankings or any of that, or, or their attention as when they got to school and, and, and they've definitely done well with it. And obviously we've seen the other side of it too. So he, he definitely deserves a lot of credit for the player he's become and uh, and the player he is right now. And just such a, he's such an important piece to this team because they definitely need him. Um, even though I do like the other pieces as well. You know, that was a concern about the FSU game was that he didn't have, I mean, he, he needed to get, he only got the four, four catches, which I thought was ridiculous for 24 yards. That, that was absolutely ridiculous. He needs to be a focal point of the offense. I mean, heck he has the biggest catch of the year. He's laying on his back against Cal and, I mean, at first on TV, I thought it landed on him. He actually went up and snatched it from the ground, which was, I mean, one of the most rem remarkable catches we've seen this year. I don't know if you saw the catch yesterday in the Jets game where um, Wilson, I mean, I don't know what the <laughs> he that was an unreal catch. Um, but another receiver I want to mention, Isaiah Horton. Where did he come from? Because he was on this team last year. This guy has emerged as a monster big threat he's a talent you know and he is that prototype six what is he six four six three 200 two, 200 10 15 pound guy like he looks the part what are your thoughts of him and his emergence this year because i think he's been an absolutely huge component to this year's team he's another guy that deserves a lot of credit you know and just sticking with the process and, and you touched on some of your concerns and 
uh, frustrations with transferring. He stuck with it. And, and sometimes, you know, I remember early on, and I, I'll say this about some of these players that aren't playing early. Like, what do you think of him? And I'm like, well, if he sticks around, that's a good sign, you know, because, and I felt like that with Isaiah. I said that about Isaiah. If he sticks around, he's got a shot. And I mean that in the terms of that, that shows a real commitment to the process and developing and all of these things, because he wasn't, the player he is today isn't the player he was a couple years ago. I think he's a guy that's really one of these guys that's matured um, over the year, understanding what it takes. And I, I think he's just continued to develop. And he did, you know, he, he did develop or he didn't make plays at the high school level there out of Tennessee. You know, one of these guys that was intriguing, a basketball guy, I'm pretty sure if I, if I remember correctly, but as you mentioned, the height speed combination just really stuck with it, had a good mindset. I remember in the spring, he had, a, he had a good uh, good spring game, or he played well there in the spring and asked about Sam Brown. And this is what I find to be interesting. They're, they're essentially bringing in Sam because you look at Restrepo and Georgia, you're returning starters. If if Horton's not ready, you know, that's why you bring in Sam Brown. Now, I understand the stuff with Jacoby, and, and maybe he was a little um, unreliable based on some of the stuff he was doing with his, you know, with the penalties and, and things like that. But, you know, when, when Brown came in, Horton took it in stride, you know, and he didn't, he could have easily left then and said, look, you're bringing in this guy. It's supposed to be my start, my job. That's not what he's done. He's actually, and then actually, you know, he's getting plenty of playing time. You know, you could argue he's their number two receiver. He's been their number two wide receiver mm -hmm. in a lot of these games early on. Yeah. You know, he's been their second best guy behind Restrepo. I think he is right now. I just think that's what he brings to the team. And uh, I like the energy and the passion he plays with. I, I know he cares uh, deeply and wants to do well. You know, going back to, you know, I know we touched on, not on, on I know when we talked yesterday uh, against Florida State, that drive there um, at the end of the half, they they kind of with the time management, whatever, they, they end up kicking a field goal. And I saw I was watching Isaiah on that play and, you know, he kind of like stomped his foot in frustration. He wanted them to go for it. And I'm sure he wanted the ball um, in that moment. So just a guy that cares and, and wants to make plays. And he said, you know, bring on the competition with Brown and, and whoever. Um, again, he's just a guy that, that really, uh, deserves a lot of credit for the player he's become. And, um, and he's certainly a key factor, you know, there's no doubt about it. There, there's no doubt that he's a big part of all this. Well, final question. And I appreciate your time today, Chris, man. Um, are you gonna be happy to finally not get home after midnight for a home football game? Because these night games. They are, I, I'm just going to them is draining. I can't imagine. I leave before you do because you have to sit there and write up the stories and deal with the press conferences and all that other stuff. First of all, that FSU game should have never been at seven o'clock. That was a noontime game, in my opinion. I watched ESPN after I got home. And when I tell you, I swear to God, you want to know how bad the FSU Miami game was? You had it on ESPN and there was not one singular highlight of that game on ESPN. On sports center. <laughs> Can you imagine FSU Miami not having one highlight? They didn't even talk about it. It wasn't a discussion. A a on, on the on the football show, on the on Sports Center, and I was up to like three, four o'clock in the morning watching this. I'm like, can I get a highlight of this game? Nah, they didn't get and they put it on ESPN. But for you, as is it nice to get home before midnight? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I, I I try not to make a big deal out of it. I do those post game reaction videos um, afterwards, and I'll say like, you know, I remember the USF game. You know, it's two three in the morning, and I'm the last one there. Look, yeah, it, it's rough for me. You know, I actually count. So I left, for example, seven o'clock. You mentioned FSU. I left at one. You know, I left at one. Got did my stuff, and um, you know, got my stuff done for the night at four. And I wasn't finished, you know, and I think that's the thing. There's always more work to do. And yeah, you, you touched on earlier about how you feel old and, and it, it's rough for me, man. There, there's no doubt about it, but I understand the excitement uh, of, of the night games for fans. And um, th that's the most important thing. And the players love them too. Uh, I'm just here for the ride, but. Dude, uh, I, but I, grew, yeah. I grew up, I grew up on high noon. It's 105 degrees on the field. You like that was the thing that was used by the Hurricanes. They play, I mean, 2000, 2000, Orange Bowl, Miami FSU, Chris Wanky, Miami goes up, Miami falls behind, Ken Dorsey hits uh, Jeremy Shockey to win the game. They missed the field goal. The place goes, I mean, 
people were passing out. It was so damn hot in the stands. They ran out of water. Dude, they ran out of water at the Orange Bowl. They ran out of water. And now you're playing. It's almost like it's like we don't believe in using heat. The heat it, as a I mean, you're not going to have it in October, really. But the heat of uh, let's play every game at night. At night. Uh, it's like everything's at seven o'clock, eight o'clock start. Even the Ball State game was a 3.30 game that started at 6 because of the rain delay. I, I, I feel for you. <laughs> oh, I'm don't sitting do here like... Uh, but it is... Yeah, it's not my favorite. It is what it is. It's part of what we do. Um, but yeah, it's definitely... It's definitely hard. There, there's no doubt about it. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's all about TV. And, you know, yeah. that's it is what it is. And, and we'll kind of see where these games go. And, you know, you'd, you'd rather be on those national TV games. I know this one's, you know, ABC at, at, on at noon and yeah. we'll, we'll see how it goes. And, and, and maybe the weather um, will play a factor. Who knows? You didn't, but, you didn't go to the, you didn't go to the Cal game, right? I, I was not there. I, I didn't but, go to that but, but when did you go to bed? Five o'clock in the morning? Cause the game ended at two 30 in the oh, morning. I, I mean, <laughs> I was, there's, it's crazy watching them still play that game. Everybody was watching, but yeah, that that's a brutal, um, it takes time, but I will say this, Rudy, like, this is what, you know, this is what helps is, the, I know that people want the content and the season yeah. that, that this team is having. Um, I, I'm going to do that. It, it's not about wh what's best for me kind of deal. Like I'm putting it out there because people want to consume it. And, and I want to get that up there as quickly as possible, as much as possible and, and really keep that going. So I understand the season, man. You know, it's not one of these things where uh, th this is where it becomes tough uh, when they're not winning. The games are still at night. The, the work is still the work. I always tell people it does not matter uh, whether they're winning or not. The work is the work and, and you still got to do it, you know? And uh, so it's, it's much easier when, when I know that people mm -hmm. really are excited about this team and the, the team is winning. And um, it's much easier talking about these wins at that time rather than, Oh my gosh, everything fell apart. But I will say, I, I know this, you know, I, I know there was a time this year, uh, the Virginia tech game, for example, the, the game was at, Oh, when I got out of there, it was probably between two and three. And I was trying to do my video afterwards and I, I it wasn't good. I, and I watched it back and um, I looked terrible uh, in terms of tired. And I was like, I cannot put this out there. I know that people have been so supportive of them, but uh, it, it looked terrible. I sounded terrible. Yeah, it was just a mess. Um, so if you don't see, if you don't see one of these, it's typically because of that or um, some sort of technical issue. But um, I, I prefer uh, I prefer the day games, um, certainly from a work standpoint. It's definitely a lot more difficult to sit there typing a story when you're when they're three and five than it is R when they're eight. Rudy, no, Rudy, we used to if we talk about that grind when we started inside the U, there were times where were terrible. I remember this. We so would bad. the three of us, you know, we would do this, and it, you know, it was like twenty four hour coverage of inside the U, in terms of we were pulling all nighters, we were almost on rotation of like you're doing the work now. And then this, um, I, I just remember how much of a grind all hours of the night. We we're all much younger at that time. It was much different. Or I remember a signing day. There was a signing day and our site crashed, uh, the morning up, you know, so we're up in the middle of the night working on that to make sure our site can handle it. So, um, I certainly remember that, that kind of stuff. It's, it's, so it's just part of it, man. This is just what we do. And, um, the grind. Oh, okay. I, I, I got another it. question before you go. You see, you just opened up a can of worms. Do you still have to make nine o'clock in the morning, Sunday morning calls to recruits after after a visit? Are you it's, still it's having to call different. people at nine o'clock in the morning? I don't know because I remember back then. I remember I I had a massive disaster with a recruit who wouldn't tell us, but other recruits said he committed, and then he came back saying I never committed, and then he committed to Tennessee. <laughs> but uh, you, you know, uh, you're always trying. You're always trying to be the. You're trying to be the first. And they're telling three different sites, three different stories, you know, yeah, it, and they're, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't do that nearly as much as I used to. Um, mm -hmm. Luckily we have Gabby that's, that does so much of the recruiting stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, that, gr the, the calls and the list and, and making sure we got everyone and, and certainly trying to cover recruiting the best we can. But yeah, that, I mean, we all had anybody that's covered recruiting at, any amount of time has stories like that. You know, I, I remember one, you, you touched on one. I remember a uh, kid got an offer. Uh, no problem. Uh, kid committed. 
you know, told back then it was different. You know, back yeah. then the, when, when the player told you, I remember being at Duke Johnson uh, at a game. He told me after the game, I'm committing. This is me committing. You know, I, you know, um, that's how things were kind of out there or a player told me committed. Well, and the school's like essentially one of these didn't take the commitment type deals and that becomes a circus. And, you know, there's been times where players want to cover their own, um, you know, cover themselves and say, I didn't say that. And it's like, you don't want to, uh, necessarily make anybody look bad, but I ha- I have the audio, you know what I mean? Like that's the kind of thing, but it just, the recruiting world, it, no matter what era or what, however, any, any kind of thing with recruiting, there's all kinds of challenges. There's, you know, it, it makes, it's, it's an exciting, but frustrating time with recruiting, but it, it is what it is. And, and that's what kind of keeps everything going. But yeah, anybody that's done anything with recruiting has some sort of story, um, that didn't go as well as they would have liked. There's no doubt about that. That 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 that, that one sucked. I remember that that one really sucked. <laughs> um, but anyhow, man, Chris, I greatly appreciate your time, man. I, I thank you so much for this. Uh, it, definitely enlightening, enjoyable, and you know, give people an, an, an you know understanding of what's going on within this program, how you view it. I mean, I view it now from the perspective of a fan. Uh, I see things, you know. I try to view it from an analytical perspective than more of a fan perspective because I, I'm watching the field from the angle I sit at. I see the whole field really, really well. So I thought that the middle of the field against FSU was open the whole game and they never really attacked it. And that's when I, when I speak on you need to dictate the, to them, not them tell you, OK, okay you're running out, route, you know, go onto the outside for everything. But attack the middle. Um, but all that said, I thank you so much again, folks. If you don't know, Chris Stock is the co-founder of inside in fact he's the actual person who brought us the idea he he is the the he was the guy who came to us and said do we want to start a site and it was myself and david lake and and we we sat at that denny's and we put it all together um so that brings back a lot of memories if you haven't yet be sure to go on subscribe to inside the U on youtube and of course go to inside the u.com uh, well, that was the site name back in my, I mean, it's 247sports.com slash something. Yeah, still inside the U.com. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're good. It's inside the it'll U.com. Your it's good. Yeah, it, it'll always be inside the U.com. Be sure to go over there and subscribe to inside the U.com. It is the elite number one source for Miami Hurricanes everything. <laughs> Cause it's won't cause you'll still cover basketball. I mean, basketball is kicking is, is tipping off, I think next week. Um, and, uh, one question about the women's team. I mean, the Cavender twins came back. <laughs> Did you watch any women's basketball when they were there? Yeah. Some, uh, I don't spend as much time, um, able to go to some practices, but yeah, I, I know they're excited under, under co- new coach with, with Trisha call up there. So, uh, mm-hmm. they, they've got some post players. I know that has, always excites all basketball players. So, and I know the Cavender twins have spoken highly about the posts that they have. So we'll see what kind of mm-hmm. season they have, um, this year, but yeah, Rudy, it, it's great. You know, w- one thing too, I just want to mention, just get this in here, whether, whether it's what I say or how you say things or whatever it we're, I think it's just so important that we just kind of use our voice and just how you touched on, but just how we see it. Look, I'm just talking about like how I see things and, and you know, it, it's not always for everybody, but it's just how I think same way with you, Rudy, you've always d- mm-hmm. been great at that of just saying how you feel. And th- look, this is how I see it, you know, and, and some people, sometimes it might rub people the wrong way, but this is, I'm just trying to provide my own voice or how we, we see things, you know? So I, I think that's just so important. I think everyone should try to do that rather than, I'll tell you this. I know this is true. I know it is so much easier to just say what people want to hear. I, I can tell you that. Of course. And I do not want to do that. I always want to try to provide my own thoughts and, you know, is what it is. Uh, don't ever, don't always get everything right, but it's just how I see things. So uh, this was great being able to talk this long. And uh, I know we always enjoy our, our conversations and whether it's this or other sports or just, just everything. So it, it's always good. Rudy. No, and- I, absolutely. I, I concur completely. I, I completely agree with you. I, I used to get all types of attacks on those message boards. If I didn't, that mean, God forbid, I didn't pick the Miami to go pick Miami to go 12 and 0 and win a national championship when we're sitting there every day at practice. And you're like, this is a seven and 16. <laughs> this is a, a, a eight and four team at best type situation. And you see it and you know it. And, and, and yet people are like, no, they're going to go 12 and 0. They're going to go 12. And 0. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. And, you know, it, it, it is what it is. So, but anyway, anyhow, 
Thank you again, Chris. I appreciate it so much. Thank you for jumping on with us. Folks, again, go to InsideTheU.com. Subscribe to that site today. This is Rudy's Rant. Power to come on on the podcast. When we talk about facts over feelings, come on now.